okay so in this lecture we are going to study bezier curves so surfaces and curves play a very important role in fields like designing engineering and manufacturing for example automobiles ships aircraft designings and small products like bottles and toys often a surface is described by a net of curves so this surface i'm going to represent by net of curves these curves are such that they intersect each other orthogonally what is the meaning of orthogonally they intersect each other perpendicular they look perpendicular so they are orthogonal curves right for example we will see a small animation in which i have designed a candle using curves so you can see this candle i am trying to show you it in different angles so now you can see the top view of the candle also you can see the base of the candle is also smooth now i will try to show you the designing or the pattern by which i have made this candle to draw this candle i have to draw curves like circles and straight lines so you see this is the pattern of the design so here by using this net i have made the candle so this is a mathematical modeling of this particular candle you can see the top of the candle these are the circles this is the wick which is i have done by using a cylinder and this is the entire vertical lines we need let me show you the bottom so when i look at the base that is also made up of small circles of varying radii and to slowly i have made the curves so that the candle also should look smooth enough okay let me go up now let me scroll up this is the top so this is how the candle is made okay so this is the mathematical modeling of candle so this is what we are supposed to look at in this particular chapter without having any prior knowledge of the shape of the curve or the mathematical expression of the curve we will describe the mathematical description of the curve using the techniques that we are going to learn in this chapter so this technique is nothing but by construction of bezier curves so we all know that if i give you a set of points suppose these are the points can we draw a smooth curve passing through all these points yes we can draw a smooth curve which is passing through all these points right but can we write the mathematical expression for that particular curve so that is what we are supposed to learn to some extent in this chapter the curve which passes exactly through all the given points that technique is known as curve fitting technique so we are not going to study this technique in this particular chapter so shape design problems are often turned as ab initio design let me write it here if i want to do shape designing of something that i have shown you like a candle this is called as ab initio design for example if you must have seen ab initio designs of car bodies wings of aircrafts etc expressing a particular surface only in terms of quantitative measures sometimes it's really not enough so we must be able to express it mathematically and because of this ab initio design problems can be actually resolved now describing the shape of a surface for ab initio design was first developed by person called as piri bezier 
Okay. So what is a Bezier curve? Now we are moving towards Bezier curves. So Bezier curves, let me write it. A Bezier curve is a curve which is determined by something called as defining polygon. So it is determined by what? A determ defining polygon. The corners of that polygon will be called as control points. I am writing only the important words, right? So, so to know that we will now see what is meant by defining polygon, control points and there is an important concept that we need to know is called as convex hull. Convex hull. So if I draw a polygon, suppose I draw a polygon. Okay. So obviously these corners I'm going to say, suppose I call them B0, B1, B2 and B3. Okay. These B0, B1, B2, B3, they are called as control points. And this polygon that I have drawn, this polygon is called as the defining polygon. What is meant by a convex hull? So we will see what is meant by convex hull in this small animation. This is the convex hull made by three points. So the inside part of the triangle. If I take uh, four points, suppose I take four points, then the interior part of that quadrilateral will be the convex cell. Let me take a hexagon. Suppose I'm drawing a hexagon now. So this will be the convex hull. Uh, let me take some different shape now, which is not convex polygon, something like this. Let me come again down. Let me go up now. Now this is the blue part is the convex one. Let me take a little bit complicated region. I'm going up, then I'm going down and then again I will go up and I will close the polygon. So this is the convex hull. So these blue regions are the convex hulls. So I hope what is meant by a convex hull is now clear. The polygonal region, the, the polygon boundary and the part which is inside that becomes the convex hull. Most important pro convex hull set that I shown you just now was this convex hull. Remember this convex, this region is going to be very important in our upcoming problems okay let us now see some properties of bezier curve so what is a bezier curve one important uh, prop property of bezier curves i'm noting down the characteristic of bezier curves before knowing what are bezier curves let me write down what will be the characteristics of bezier curves so first of all the bezier curve must completely lie inside the convex hull it should lie inside the convex hull that is the reason i told you what is the convex hull for example i am looking at this particular example so the bezier curve must lie inside this okay or the bezier curve must lie inside this right this is the first property first first characteristic of the bezier curve secondly what we will uh, do is that it should pass through the first point and last point only. So it passes through first and last point. It need not pass through or it will not pass through the given other point. So suppose I'm taking this particular polygon. This is the defining polygon. And we know that this is the convex hull inside part is the convex hull so this is the first point which i'm calling b0 and the last point i'm calling b3 so the curve should pass through what it should pass through first and last point it need not touch the other two points b1 and b2 okay the third important characteristics is is that it is a free hand curve okay it will not have any vertices so it will not be like this okay so it will be a smooth curve inside the convex hull not only that this bezier curve will be what it will be a 
polynomial it will be a it will be represented by a polynomial okay and what is the what is that polynomial that polynomial must be of degree one less than the number of control points so how many control points are there in this particular figure there are four control points four control points are b not b1 b2 b3 so what will be the what will be this bezier curve this is the bezier curve okay this bezier curve will be a curve which will be represented by a polynomial of degree 3 so it is called a cubic curve okay if i have a bezier curve which is inside this particular triangle okay so i'm calling this b not b1 and b2 now we know that this is the first control point this is the last control point so the bezier curve must pass through the first and last control point so it will be suppose it is something like this okay it's a free hand diagram it is lying in the control uh, it it is lying in the convex hull so and what what will be the degree of this polynomial and it will be a polynomial of degree how much of degree equal to 2 why because the control points are how much because we have three control points so with this i hope now what a uh, bezier curve should be a brief idea is now little bit clear to you okay now let us move to actually finding the bezier curve so i will do what now what will i do i will give you control points okay and we will uh, we will start constructing bezier polynomials bezier curves inside that given define defining polygon okay so we will now define what is a bezier polynomial so let b not b1 up to bn b n plus 1 control points these are n plus 1 control points and let each bi be represented in the form of xi y which is a position vector of bi so the parametric equation of this bezier curve is given by pt equal to jn0 t b0 plus jn1 t b1 plus so on jn n t b n where what is j n i j n i of t is a polynomial n choose i t power n 1 minus t power n minus 1 where t lies between 0 and 1 these are called bernstein polynomials so j n i is are called bernstein polynomials and this entire expression that i have written here pt this is called as a bezier polynomial now if i try to substitute the values of j n i in the above polynomial what will happen it will be become pt is equal to j n 0 means n c 0 t power 0 1 power n minus i sorry here it is n minus i i am sorry so it will become 1 minus t power n into b not plus the next term is j n 1 t b 1 which is n choose 1 
t into 1 minus t power n minus 1 p1 plus dot 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 till the last term what is j n n t j n n is n choose n n choose n is 1 so it will become t raised to n 1 minus t raised to 0 so it will go away into b n so i hope now you have understood how you have how i have written this bernstein polynomial by substituting sorry the bezier polynomials by substituting the bernstein polynomials so let us take some particular cases so that it will be easy for you to understand this bezier polynomial so let me write control points and here let me write bezier curve so suppose i have only one point b naught in that case the bezier polynomial this pt when you have only one point it will just become b naught so it will be just a constant polynomial when i put two points when i take two points control points b naught and b1 what will happen here so how will this expression become now so you will get pt is equal to 1 minus t raised to 1 b naught plus the next term will just become what it will become so here you have the next term will be the last term right because there are only two points so put n equal to 1 here what will this become it will become t b 1 so this is the bezier curve for two control points now can we write it for three control points so b naught b1 and b2 now i'm substituting the values directly so what will it become pt is equal to the first will be 1 minus t whole square into b naught when you write the third thing you will understand how to remember the formulas plus 2 times t into 1 minus t b1 plus t square into b2 do you see what what have we done we have slowly decreased the power of 1 minus t okay the power is decreasing and at the same time the power of t is increasing okay when i write the bezier polynomial for four control points what will i get pt equal to i will get one minus t whole cube then the next term will be three times i am writing the binomial coefficients three into 1 minus t square increase 1 power of t again 3 into 1 minus t decrease power of 1 minus t and increase the power of t and now remove 1 minus t from the picture the last binomial coefficient is 1 1 minus t power raised to 0 and it will get t cube what will i write here here i have b naught here i have b1 here i have b2 here i have b3 it is the sum of all these so this becomes a expression for pt bezier curve with four control points and this will continue and so on so i hope now you are clear with the thing how to write the bezier polynomials or when the number of control points are given to you so these four things will be very important for us in this particular chapter now let us go on for problems and see some geometrical interpretations or some animations which will clear everything related to bezier curves so let me go for problem number one the simple problem we will find a bezier curve I will say that the find parametric curve a Bezier curve in particular
with control point 1 comma 2 so I am taking only one control point okay in the xy plane I am taking one control point where is that point x axis 1 y axis 2 so this is the point 1 comma 2 so the control points are there is only one control point and we know what is the Bezier polynomial for only one control point it is given by the point itself so it will be just 1 2 so the curve will passing through one so it's a Bezier curve okay it is what is the what is the how does the curve look the curve is actually nothing but a dot so there is no uh, thing that we can really understand from by taking just one control point so let us move to the next example and let's take two control points and then see how will the Bezier polynomial or Bezier curve look so let me write a question find parametric equation of Bezier curve determined by two control points B naught is 1 2 and the second control point is 3 comma 1 okay so let me write the solution so B naught is given to be 1 2 and B1 is given to be 3 1 okay we will now calculate the Bezier polynomial also and we will even try to draw it so that the geometry will be clear in front of you okay so what is the Bezier polynomial PT given by we have written it above for two points it looks like 1 minus T into B naught plus T into B1 let us substitute those numbers there so 1 minus t into point b naught is 1 comma 2 plus t b1 is what b1 is 3 comma 1 okay now let us multiply this 1 minus t inside to each factor let us multiply this t also to each factor so it will become 1 minus t comma 2 minus 2t I multiplied 2 to both of them plus 3t comma t which will now I will add the first component with the first component so what is 1 minus t plus 3t it is 1 plus 2t comma what is 2 minus 2t plus t it will be 2 minus t so this is the expression for the Bezier polynomial or Bezier curve parametric equation for the two points okay so this is what we were looking for right now the is it actually a Bezier curve let us check one simple characteristic what will happen if t is equal to 0 if t is equal to 0 this p0 will become 1 comma 2 this was the first point 1 comma 2 was the first one what will happen if t is equal to 1 we all know that t varies from what t varies from always 0 to 1 it's it's I will call it time let, let me say t is time so at 0 seconds you will be at b0 and after 1 at 1 second I will be at the next point so if I put p at t equal to 1 I am going to get 3 comma 1 who is this point this point was b2 this was the second point so the Bezier polynomial here should start at b naught and it should end at what it should end at b1 so this is how this Bezier curve I expect to look like there is no other control point so is this shape of curve correct that I have drawn here I must use this particular formula and draw the shape of the Bezier curve exact shape this is the mathematical expression of the curve Bezier curve and now I'm worried that how this Bezier curve looks like okay let us see one small animation now you can see this uh, Bezier curve points I have plotted here so this is the time t axis which is going from 0 to 1 and the two points are uh, 
A12 and B31, where the middle Bezier curve I'm supposed to plot passing through A and B. Pt is the expression that we have obtained. Okay, let me move the time now slowly and see how the Bezier curve gets sketched. Let me go a little bit fast. See, as time t is moving from 0 to 1, the Bezier curve is slowly proceeding towards the point B. So we understand that this Bezier curve is actually nothing but a straight line passing through the point A and B. Okay, so that expression, whatever you got for PT, was an expression of a straight line. Okay, I will I will try to show you again. Okay, let me repeat the animation. So as time t proceeds from 0 to 1 on the left hand side, you can see time is changing. The points on of the Bezier curves start from A and they start approaching the point B. So this is the Bezier curve passing through the two points. So conclusion of this exercise is that a, a Bezier curve with two control points is nothing but a straight line joining the two control points. Now, it will become very interesting when I will move on to a Bezier curve with three control points and that will be really exciting now. So let me go to the next question. So find the parametric equation of a Bezier curve. Determined by three control points B naught, which is minus one, two. The second control point is B one, which is two comma four, and the third control point is four comma one. We will also find the value of P zero point five. Okay, let's see how to do this later. First, let us understand what is a Bezier curve passing through three points. So solution here, we have three control points. So what is the value of N here? The value of N is equal to two because we have labeled a point from B naught, B1 up to B2, correct? So N is equal to two, Bn is two. Therefore, what is a polynomial Pt given by, we have written it above. What was that polynomial? It was 1 minus t whole square b naught plus 1 minus t into 2 times t b1 plus t square times b2. I will substitute these points as usual. I have shown in the previous example 1 minus t square into b naught is minus 1, 2 plus 2 times 1 minus t into t into b1 is 2 comma 4 plus t square times 4 comma 1. Okay, and I will simplify this. Now I will skip the simplification part. I, you know all of you that you are supposed to take this real number and multiply to every factor inside. So this is the real number. I will multiply to every person inside the that is the every component okay and when i simplify that entire expression what i'm going to get is pt is equal to it's not very difficult it is will come up to be uh, i've kept the answer ready with me minus 1 plus 60 minus t square comma the second is 2 plus 4t minus 5t square so this is the value of the uh, this is the expression for PT, which is a Bezier curve expression. What is T varying from? T varies from 0 to 1. Now, how does this Bezier curve looks like? Anyway, is it is it the correct Bezier curve? What is the value at t equal to 0? We know at time t equal to 0, the, the Bezier curve should start at the first point. And at time t equal to 1, the Bezier curve should end at the last point. What is P0? If I put uh, uh, t equal to 0, I am going to get minus 1, 
and here I'm going to get two. So this is exactly our first control point. When I put t equal to one, I'm going to put p t equal to one in this particular expression. So p of one, if you substitute t equal to one, you see that this will become four and this will exactly become one. So it is four comma one. So it is the third control point. And what is asked in this question? It is asked to us in this question that find p of 0 0.5. So I will substitute t equal to 0 0.5 everywhere. And I hope that exp that uh, calculation you can do, which is 1.75 and 1.5. So this is OK. This is easy to do. OK, now what if what we are interested in is that how this Bayesian curve really looks like. Now we are pretty sure that these three points are something like this. I don't know how they look. What is the shape? So B0, B1 and B2. What we know is that this is the convex hull of that defining polygon. The Bayesian curve should start at zero and it should end at B2 and it should something be like this. It should not touch the middle control point. Okay, now let us actually see one animation in which this Bayesian curve we are going to see and how T varies and how the curve is generated. Let us see that quickly. So this is the, uh, the picture B0, B1 and B2, whatever were given in the problem, we have entered the same B0, B1, B2. Okay, so P is the PT. This is the time axis which is going from 0 to 1. And uh, now this Bayesian curve will at t equal to z, as t varies from 0 to 1, the Bayesian curve will vary in this inside convex hull. Uh, will it be a straight line or will it be uh, turning? How it will turn? Let us see. See, as time changes, the Bayesian curve starts taking a curve. It is not going near B1, but it is taking the curve shape and now it is again trying to move towards B2. So this is the Bayesian curve. You see it is generated which passes through B0 and B2. Let me show you again smooth variation. This is how the Bayesian curve is generated as time t is moving from 0 to 1. I hope you can see time t is moving from 0 to 1. Okay, this is the way the curve is generated. So I hope now you must have got a brief idea of how a Bayesian curve uh, looks for three control points. Okay, but now I'm going to teach you one small technique of how to actually visualize that curve without using any kind of computer machinery or any software. Okay, how will you try to sketch that Bayesian curve? Let me show you one small animation for that. See, look at these three points I want, and A and C are the first and the last control points. I will start drawing segments which are slowly incrementing from A to B and incrementing from B to C. Okay, so these segments are slowly the, the lengths, the segments are varying from A slowly and bringing them down and here I'm increasing the value of the horizontal by point, some increments. The increments are same and I will draw those lines. Okay. See, I'm slowly, slowly in decreasing the position from up and trying to go towards the right. So when I do this, this, you see, there is a curve you get is automatically generated on the paper. You see, I will show you that. So that curve is actually the Bayesian curve. Let me show you one more example. So P1, P2 and P3 are control points. P1 and P3 are the end points. So I will join P1, P2 and P3. As, uh, as in the previous thing, I will again do the same thing. I will slowly come down and here I will slowly go right. Now this is an acute angle which is formed by these control points. And when I try to draw those segments, you see a curve is generated automatically in the triangular part of P1, P2, P3. And this curve is the Bayesian curve determined by these three control points. 
now we will see how the computer generates the bezier curve so let me take three points in the same fashion right angle so these three are the control points so the triangle is actually a right angle triangle formed because of these three control points okay so let me first uh, complete that uh, particular triangle okay so let me take draw that hypotenuse of the triangle also so you'll see but remember that the p1 p2 p3 are in that order and this is the hypotenuse so p1 and p3 are the endpoints of that bezier curve okay and let me see let me take the control point uh, on the diagonal itself let me click one of the corners let me click uh, p1 and show you see that green point is that control point so let me bring that control point to the original control point so let me move it as i move the control point the bezier curve starts moving and i'm bringing the control point here so this green control point is our p1 okay p0 is the upper point this is p1 green point this is p2 so this is a shape you'll get when i take the three points in the acute angle form three points so p1 p2 p3 or p0 p1 p2 the end points are the uh, and uh, are p0 and p1 let me draw that triangular part and complete the con defining polygon so the bezier curve will pass through the first and the last point and this control point is here where acute angle is there see this green point is the control point i will steadily move it towards the position of p1 see the bezier curve starts getting stretched and i will keep it there so this is the bezier if i move it more far away what will happen this bezier curve will also change its shape see let me move it a little bit far so let me stretch it somewhere yes if i move this control point accordingly the bezier curve starts changing the shape okay so let's bring so this is a p0 p1 and this is p2 let me bring it to the original position that we wanted so yes so this is the bezier curve that you can see so i hope that the bezier curve with three control points is now extremely clear to all of you now let's move to the last point of this particular chapter which is bezier curve with four control points so let me first solve one problem for you so find a parametric equation for a bezier curve with four control points b0 which is 2 1 b1 which is 4 comma 4 b2 which is 5 comma 3 and b3 which is 5 comma 1 so further i will also find p at 0 0.3 means t equal to 0 0.3 we have to put and the p dash the derivative of the polynomial at t we will first find and then we will find a derivative at the point 0 0.3 so again there also i will put t equal to 0 so let us first solve this problem okay how to do this so what is the value of n equal to here n is equal to 3 because we have four points so what is the polynomial pt pt for four points was 1 minus t whole q b naught plus 3 into 1 minus t whole square into t b1 plus 3 1 minus t into t square b2 plus t cube b3 so this is the bezier polynomial and now I will substitute the points B0, B1, B2, B3 in this particular polynomial. So it is equal to Pt is equal to 1 minus T whole cube into the first point is 2, 1 plus 3 into 1 minus T whole square into T into the second point was 4, comma 4 plus 3 into 1 minus T into t square into point is 5 comma 3 plus t cube 5 comma 1 so again i will multiply this entire quantity to 
each of them inside this is the real number and then I will separate out the first component and the second component okay so that will give me the Bezier polynomial for these four control points when I put t equal to point 3 what will I get t equal to point 3 because it is asked in the question p 0 0.3 put just put t equal to 0 0.3 in this particular component and you will get the answer is 12.035 and second component will be 7.80 for it's a mere calculation then the next task is finding a derivative of this Bezier curve because it's a polynomial so I can differentiate it what is the derivative of this but sorry what is the derivative of this particular first term the first term is here the derivative is 3 into 1 minus t whole square into 2 comma 1 plus what is the derivative of this particular second term it is I will use a product rule 3 into 1 minus t whole square will be as it is plus 3 into 1 minus t whole square the derivative will become 2 times 1 minus t into minus 1 into t 4 4 plus what is the derivative of this term the derivative again product rule 3 into 1 minus t into derivative of t squared is 2t plus 3 into 1 minus t derivative is minus 1 into t square into what into the point 5 comma 3 plus the last term what is the derivative of the last term the derivative of the last term is 3 t square 5 comma 1 and just put t equal to 0 0.3 so this actually is also computational just put use your calculator and find the value of p dash 0 0.3 which i will leave you as an exercise so this is not a very difficult task okay now now we want to understand what does a bezier curve with four control points look like so there are various types of shapes suppose i look at this type of shape okay suppose i'm having here first control point is b naught b1 b2 and b3 okay how will the so this is the defining polygon okay the curve should pass through this point the curve should also pass through this point and these two points will control the shape of the polygon so i expect it to look something like this okay i don't know i'm just making a guess suppose my four points are in this shape okay so this is b naught b1 b2 is here and b3 is here so this means that this polygon is like this and make a close polygon so this will be like this so what is a convex hull in the in, in the initial part of this lecture we have seen that this is the convex hull so how should the bezier curve look it should start at b naught and it should end at b3 and it should not go outside the convex hull so i x and b1 and b3 b2 are going to control the shape of that per basis so i expect it that it should look something like this okay this is what i expected this is the bezier curve it should look maybe i am not sure again suppose i take the polynomial of say suppose of something like this shape let me uh, take here and let me take here okay suppose i'm saying this is b naught this is b1 b2 and b3 okay so it is this polygon which i wanted actually I wanted b3 here and like this okay so then how will the shape of the basic color so it should pass through this point and it should pass through the first and the last point and these two points will be controlling the shape so i expect that my bezier curve should be like this okay because this is the convex hull it should not go outside the convex hull so the curve should start at b naught go in go near to b1 it should also go near to b2 and it should come and stop at b3 okay now let us take these three examples 
and actually see how a software draws these Bezier curves. So let me take the four points in a simple polygon. Let me take first point here. Let me bring it down. Let me take it to the right now. Let me again go a little bit up. So this is a simple polygon. And now I hope the first step and last point are clear to you. Let me keep it here. Okay. So these are the four vertices. First and the last points are the end, end points. B0, B1, B2 and B3. So I've joined that segment. Now on that segment, for the time being, I'm going to keep the control points on that straight line. Okay. I see this green control point I'm supposed to pull down. Okay. And so let me just pull it down. Bring to position of B1. And the next control point I've kept on that same line. So let me see the control point green dot and let me bring it down to this point here. So I'll pull it down. And yes, so this is the Bezier curve of this particular polygon. Let me now take a zigzag type of polygon. So let me go up and now let me go down. So this is B0, B1, B2 is down and B3 is again up. Okay, so these are the four control points. So first and the last points are the, are the B0 and B3. Let me close it. So let me put a segment over there now first. So let me join these two points by a segment. And now let me take see if the control points are currently I've kept them on the white line segment itself. These other two are the middle control points. So you see green point I'm going to drag to the original point B1. Let me do it again. Um, uh, yes, I'm pulling it up now. Then after this, I'll move to the next point. The control point is also kept on this white segment. See here, you see the control point. I'll move it down. So let me bring it down. Yes, so now I hope you can see that the Bezier curve is what we expected. It should be in the convex hull. Let's do one more example. So now taking this particular region, I'm showing you B0. This is uh, B1. The next point is B2 and this is B3. So I want a Bezier curve for this particular polygon. It should be inside this convex hull. Now let me see the control points here. The control point green I'm going to drag there. OK, so let me drag it there and this control point is here. This control point I'm going to drag it downwards so either from this side or either from this side. Let me see from which side I should drag. So let me first drag this up. I'm dragging it to B1. That control point is moving there. According to the Bezier curve is getting pulled here in the second control point. Now there is a challenge for us. Whether this should I drag from this side or should I drag it from this side? Let's see what happens from both the sides. What will happen to the shape of the curve? If I drag it from this side, the curve automatically gets inside the because you know Bezier curve always has to lie inside the convex cell. If I drag it from the other side, this side, what will happen to the curve? You see it is again gaining the same shape. Even if I drag it from this side, still it goes inside the convex cell. See it's going still it's twisting inside the convex cell. OK, if I drag it from the other side also, you'll get the same Bezier curve. OK, so it won't go outside the convex cell as we know. It's the, the, cur the curve is given by this. And uh, I hope now this idea is very much clear to you. So, so with these three animations, I hope the concept of Bezier curves is now clearly understood.